So you've got everything you need to get started in long range shooting. And what we need to do, our next step is gonna be mounting our optical on our rifle and zeroing our rifle so we can take it out in the field and do some shooting. So I'm Shane with New American Arms, and right now I'm gonna go over my steps of getting your rifle zeroed and getting on paper and going out to the range and shooting. All right, so next what we need to do is we need to mount our rings on our rig, whether you have a gas gun or a bolt gun, it's basically gonna be the same thing. So uh, if you have a gas gun, what I recommend and what everybody's gonna recommend is a cantilever mount. This is gonna offset that optic to where you get that, that eye, that relief you need on an actual AR platform gun. And then most of the time on a bolt gun, you're gonna have individual rings. You can also get a one piece mount like this one, but most of the time you're just gonna get individual and match set rings. And then so what we wanna do is we wanna mount them first. And all these are gonna have torque specs and the torque specs are gonna be issued by the manufacturer. So you just, it'll come on the box of the rings. It'll tell you what you need to torque them down with. I suggest going and getting, we sell these at the shop. They're called Wheeler Engineering makes them. It's called a fat wrench. And what it basically is, is just, it's got torque settings in it and it's made for working on guns, mounting optics or that stuff. Great piece of kit, comes with all the bits and stuff you need, your torques for the top of your rings, all that stuff. So um, what we need to do is first we need to set these up on the top of your rifle. And then, so what I like to do is hand tighten them on here first. You don't need to torque them down yet, but when you put them on top of your pick rail, what I like to do is slide both of them forward because when you sit them on the pick rail, they're going to have a little bit of play in that notch that they sit in. And what you don't want is you don't want it backer in the middle of that when you torque it down because under heavy recoil, it's going to slide that thing forward or it's prone to slide. Not all of them will do it, but let's just go ahead and weed this out now. It doesn't take any more time. You're setting it up. This is one thing you can get out of the way where you don't have to worry later on when you're in the field. You have zero problems. You're right. You're optics not holding zero. So what I like to do is hold these forward and then that way they butt up against the front of that groove on that pick rail. So when that rifle recoils back, this thing has nowhere to go. It's seated against that groove. So you're good. And then we just want to go ahead and torque these guys down to whatever the manufacturer recommends on them. And then, so once we have that done, we want to remove this top cap, which will just leave that bottom C area on your on your uh, your rings exposed and then I like to just sit my optic in them if you get a nice set of rings you don't have to worry about lapping them and lapping means is that these two surfaces these conical surfaces are going to line up when you sit that tube in them it's not going to be one's canted this way one's canted the other way and when you tighten the caps down on the top it's going to bend the tube of your optic so another good reason to go ahead and just fork a little money over on a nice set of matched rings and the match means is they are both come out of the same cut right behind each other. So when you get the rings, they're a matching set. You don't have two randoms that are pulled from two different, you know, cuts when they're, when they're milling these out, when they're making them. And that way you know they're going to be nice and true. You don't even have to worry about that. Um, if you want to double check, like I said, when you pull the caps off and you have this torque down the bottom base of the rings on your rifle, you can just sit your optic in it and just make sure that thing's sitting nice and flush on those rings front and back. Most of the time, you don't have to worry about it. All these match rings, when you get them, they're fine. You don't have any problems with them. So um, next step would be getting the rifle level so we can get the optic level with the rifle. So I talked about this tripod before mounting, mounting your rifle on it and being able to have something to mount. The reason I like getting one of these guys is because I end up, not only can you shoot off this in the field, which is great if you don't have a bench or any of this stuff, you know, and you just want to pack light, bring this in your truck, shoot off of it wherever you are. It's great for that, but it's also great in the armory, in the shop, in your gun room when you're doing this kind of work when you're mounting optics. We end up keeping three of these guys around all over. I have a couple of them at my house in my armory that I use all the time just for something to hold this rifle when I'm working on. One, I can pick this thing up. I can take it to different work areas. It's not fixed like a vice on a table. You can move it. It's mobile. And then two, it's got a bubble level built in. So I can clamp my rifle into it and then level this. And then I know my rifle's level. And then if you want, everybody sells these. They're just line levels. This one's from Home Depot. We also sell the Wheeler ones that come in the kit with the Wheeler wrench for zeroing. 
What I like to do is before I mount my optic on here, I'll take this guy and I'll slide it in here and I'll sit it on my pick rail. And then that way I can tell if my rifle's candid or not. I'll just sit it right on top of my pick rail and it'll tell me if I'm level or not. And then I can adjust the rifle there. We want that rifle level left to right and front to back. And we can check that with just a basic little, these are $2, little line level. And then so once we get that all level, what we want to do is we want to set our optic in those two bottom rings that we have in there. The top caps are off, we have the bottoms, they're torqued down, and we're going to set our optic in there. So when you get that set, before you put these top rings on and start clamping and do all that, what you need to do is get on that rifle and then check that eye relief to make sure that you're in focus, everybody's eyes are different, and make sure that when you see it on that rifle, that 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 optic's coming in clear where you are and you're comfortable on it. And then that way we know the distance in which that needs to be set on these rings. And then once we get that, the next step is gonna be level on this with the actual rifle. So we have the rifle level, we know it's level. You can double check it before you do this if you want. But when you got your optic in here where you want it, let's put these two top caps on and we're not gonna tighten them. We're just gonna kinda go ahead and hand tighten them down but we're not gonna torque them. We wanna be able to move this, this optic around. And then we're gonna take that level and we're gonna put it on the top cap of that optic. And then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move that optic left to right until that optic is level. And then once that optic's level, we can go ahead and start torquing these down to the manufacturer's torque. Most people, it's usually about 15, 20 pounds. You don't wanna to over torque these things. Another reason to get a torque wrench so you're not in here hounding this thing to death and you don't know what 20 pounds is and you end up stripping these screws out, you ruin your rings, you can't do anything with them now. So, and what I like to do is kind of a cross pattern, because if you notice, if you tighten two sides at one time, it's gonna pull that scope back over unlevel. But if you do one, it'll pull it over a little bit. If you go to the other side and do the same amount on that one, it'll pull that scope back over to in the level position. And I like to keep checking it as I go, just to make sure it stays level. But slowly work that torque down on both sides front and back and change those positions. So switch, so do this one, do this one, do this one, do this one, and then do them both in the X until that thing, it'll stay perfect. And then once it starts to get to where it's tight, you can go ahead and torque those things down. You're good to go. Your optics level with your gun, it's mounted. And then the next step would be to go ahead and get this thing sighted in at 100 yards. So we have our optic mounted on our rifle. Next step is gonna be to actually start to get this thing sighted in. And then I have a couple little methods I use to where you don't burn up a lot of ammo and you can pretty much get on paper right away. I would recommend zeroing everything for 100 yards. Um, that way you just dial out from there. There's no need to, to zero anything at 200 yards. 100 yards is, is where you want to go. So what I do is I bore sight it. And you can do this without buying a bore sight. You don't have to buy a laser bore sighter and spend all this money. You can do this without spending this money. I've done it for years. This is basically the only way I do it and it works just fine. And what we want to do is we want to set something up at 25 yards. So we don't need to go to 100 because it's going to be hard at that distance. We'll, we'll step it back and get on paper and then we'll work our way out to 100. That way we aren't burning up a lot of ammo um, doing this. So what we want to do is one, I get a piece of paper out. You can do a target, you can do a piece of paper, you just need a reference point on something that you can look at 25 yards away. Um, and, and you don't have ammo to do, you don't need ammo to do any of this, so if you want to, you can do this in your house if you have 25 yards before you go out to the range, because um, this requires no ammo. So I'll just get a piece of paper, and what I do is I just put a sticker on it. A lot of people get those easy shot stickers for your targets to cover your holes. They're orange or whatever, just something bright you can see, um, circle. And then what you want to do is I put, keep the, you want to put the gun in a vise or something that secures it so it won't move. So what I do is I pull the gun out of my, bolt out of my rifle. And what you want to do is obviously check, make sure the gun's unloaded, everything's safe before you, you start doing any of this. And then what I want to do is I want to make sure that I can look down and see down the bore of my rifle, down the barrel from the receiver. And then I have, a cheek weld piece on here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that because that's in my way. And then I'm gonna pull my bolt out obviously so I, can, so I can see down this. And what I wanna do is line this rifle up with this target and I wanna be able to look down that barrel and see this dot inside through my barrel. And then this right here is kind of a reference. This is where your barrel is. This is what it'll look like if you're looking through your barrel down at it. You'll have the dot and it'll be center of your barrel. 
And then what you want to do is look after you get that acquired, lock it down so it doesn't move. So when you look through that barrel, you see this, this is what you're looking at. This is what you see. Then you want to go and you want to look through your optic and you want to try to see where your optic is in reference to that. You want to look through your optic and see the same thing. And if you look through your optic and your optic is here and you look through your barrel and there, what you want to do is go ahead and make that adjustment through your scope to try to get to where you're looking through the optic and the optic is dead center on that dot as well. And then that's a real easy way to bore sight without doing any of that stuff. You can do that in your house. You can do that in the backyard. It doesn't, you, you don't have any ammo. The gun's not hot. And then that'll get you on paper at 25 yards. So that way, when you make that shot, you'll be really close to that. And then you can go ahead and work from there. So now that you got your rifle bore sighted, we're going to go out to the range and we're going to set a target up at 25 yards. And you can set this same target up or you can actually get a target with multiple things. I like to do a bigger piece of paper. That way, for some odd reason, I'm still way off. Something happened. I can still see what my point of impact on there and I can adjust. And then same thing. What I like to do is go ahead and, and lock this thing down on this dot, whether you're on bags or whatever, just make sure you can see that dot through that barrel and there it's still, it's still zero. And then what you want to do is just make that first shot and see where it hits. And most of the time you'll be pretty close bore sight. You won't, you be three, four inches off somewhere in there, but you'll be close enough to where you're on paper and you have something to adjust from. And then adjust from there. Take that first shot and then make an adjustment and then take another shot. Sometimes I like to do two shots before I make that first adjustment just to make sure when I make that other shot, I'm not over here. That way I know for a fact something's probably loose on my optic. Whether the mount, I forgot to tighten down the mounts, I didn't torque down the, the top rings tight enough, something's not right. So what I would like to do is just make those two first shots, make sure they're pretty close to the same hole, and then that way I know I'm good to go and I can make my adjustments. So next is making those adjustments at 25 yards. Most optics are, you know, this one's one click is a 0.1 MRAD. Most of them are quarter inch at 100 yards on the adjustments on one click. So you, you got to remember that if you're at 25 yards at 100 yards, if you're at 25, it's four times what it is. So most of them tell you at 100 yards, it's one click equals a quarter inch at 100 yards. Well, you got to think that if you're 25 yards, you're a quarter of 100 yards. So you four times that on your click. So it's going to take more clicks to get to where you are. You're not at 100 yards. Um, a lot of times the easy way to do it too, if you don't want to worry about clicks and going over and you don't, you, you're not quite comfortable doing any of that, what you can do is if this thing is torqued down in a vise and it's not moving anywhere, you can look through this and turn your turrets and watch the turret move. And all you need to do is take that turret and take it over to the bullet hole you shot. And then that's zero and it. it's that easy. You don't even have to understand what any of these clicks mean right now to get that thing zeroed. You can literally just look through there as it's stabilized in the vise and then turn those turrets and watch that turret move. I mean, watch that reticle move and just bring that reticle down to those holes you shot. And then once you feel pretty good about that, shoot two more at that bullseye and then see where you are on that target. And if you print two there in the bullseye, then what I would do is once you feel good at 25 yards and you're in there, I would go ahead and take this target out to 100 yards then. And then that way you'll know you'll be on paper. Um, at 25 yards, you're probably going to be a little low because then you'll probably be three or four inches low at 100. So expect that. But next I would move that target out 100 and just repeat this same process at 100 yards. Go out there, make those shots, see where that group is. I recommend doing a couple shots, you know, shoot two of them just to verify that something's not wrong, nothing's moved. And then once you see those two shots, just go ahead and adjust from there. And then once you're in that target, you're zeroed for 100 yards. And then after that, we can go out to the range and then it's time to start running this thing out to farther distances. And um, we do also offer this as a service at the shop. So if you don't feel comfortable, maybe you can't get out to a range that has 100 yards. Maybe you just don't have the time to it. Maybe you just don't feel comfortable doing it. You can bring your, your rifle and your optic to us and we will mount them. Um, and we will professionally sight them in for you at 100 yards. And then uh, you can just come pick your rifle up and you'll be ready to go. And you feel confident that it's been done right and, and that you don't have to worry about it. So um, I hope this helped everybody on the next step in getting out in the field and getting shooting long range. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, like always, we're at the shop. We're here to help. Bring the rifle by. Come by. Talk to us. Sit down. Tell us what's going on. And we'll be happy to help.